Hey, thanks for dropping by to the Planners on Purpose podcast, created by Naomi Tucker, CMP. Now, this space is for the event planners to encourage and empower you so that you can fully live your life on purpose. So before we dig in, please take a moment to subscribe so you get future shows. Now, here she comes, your host, Naomi. Well, hello, everyone. This is Naomi. Excited to have you here with me today for another great episode. Today, we're going to be jumping into a conversation about diversity. I have a guest, Laura Lee White from Spectrum Speakers, and Laura has dedicated her mission to really bring forth diverse and inclusive talent to the event industry. We are going to have a very thought-provoking and engaging conversation, and I cannot wait for you to hear it. But before we jump in, I want to give you a little bit more about Laura. Laura is a speaker specialist. She has a background in marketing spanning 15 years, working at award-winning agencies such as Publicist, BD Network, and Crew Talent. Now, throughout her career, Laura Lee has overseen a number of speaker, presenter, entertainment partnerships across key brands and events such as BT Sport, Retail Trust, Virgin Money, UEFA Champions League, Nickelodeon, Pfizer, just to name a few. Spectrum was born really from a clear need to fill the diversity deficit. So I'm looking forward for you to hear this discussion and I look forward to coming back on the end of this episode to share my takeaways. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Planners on Purpose podcast. Today, I have a wonderful guest with me, Laura Lee White with Spectrum Speakers. I'm excited to talk with her and we're just going to talk about all things diversity and talk a little bit about her business as well. So Laura Lee, welcome to Planners on Purpose podcast. Hi, Naomi. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me along. Yeah, I'll just kind of dive, dive straight in. So yeah, I'm Laura Lee. I am the founder of the representation and inclusion focused speaker and entertainer consultancy. So that means basically that we provide keynote speakers and entertainers and industry experts who come from diverse backgrounds, but aren't necessarily speaking on the subject of diversity. Perfect. So how, well, talk about a little bit about your journey getting into um, this space, by the way, which I think is an amazing space to be in. And um, I think we all need resources for booking um, diverse speakers and talent. So thank you for what thank you're you. doing. Um, but what made you, I guess, enter into this journey with what you're doing now? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, right right from the beginning, I've always kind of worked in the events industry in some guise or another. I kind of started my career in experiential marketing, working on sort of product launches and roadshows and things like that, but especially from a kind of promotional staffing capacity. And yeah, realized that I was really kind of drawn to working with people and talent in that kind of way and actually wanted to really help to nurture talent, people who were really kind of intentional about what they what they wanted and their skill set. So yeah, I, I gravitated into the speaking industry. It was one of those one of those things that you didn't really I didn't really realize as was the thing until I, until I realized it was the thing. And I was like, wow, this is, this is perfect. This is exactly the kind of uh, base that I've been looking for career wise. And yeah, worked, worked my way to kind of leadership positions, but started to kind of, I started to feel a bit of a disconnect to my role and what I was doing. It just felt a bit flat and I couldn't, couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't really figure out what it was so like unfulfilling um, in a way yeah absolutely that's it yeah bang on and then the pandemic happened <laughs> which kind of provided a lot of thinking space for for all of us a bit of room for reflection and contemplation and of course you know the diversity challenges in the world you know especially in America and you know George Floyd and you know, the, the long overdue uprising 
just made me think even more like actually I feel really complicit to to not creating diversity and representation within my work that was kind of when I I had that aha moment I was like it's not it's not my work it's the culture of my industry and that actually I that I, there wasn't any representation there wasn't any kind of belonging or connection there it was really homogenous speakers were men white men middle-aged middle class and not much else occasionally women but that was about it so yeah, so Spectrum was basically born <laughs> from a need, you know, to, to solve to solve that problem. I didn't really have many ambitions to be a business owner myself, but I couldn't couldn't find another business that was working yeah. to solve that problem. And yeah, yeah, that was that was how it happened. I think that's when you know you have a really good thing because it's really born out of the passion and the need that you see to serve a specific audience. So. Yeah, um, the fact that you're just saying, "Hey, this is I want to fill this need," um, because let's face it, you're right. There was a lot missing because of the what happened, George Floyd, and that whole thing. It really brought about a lot of emotions, I think, from both sides. And um, and it was really interesting just to kind of hear the emotion from just from people who probably had been a little bit suppressed a bit in the space mm-hmm. versus the people that um, maybe have had a lot more privilege in the space. Uh, why do you think that we were in that position in, in the first place? Why do you feel like it was unbalanced? I mean, it's, it's, this, it's systemic systems mm-hmm. really that, you know, that, that have been in power and in presence for you know forever and I think as I said you know a lot of people a lot of kind of minorities in in whatever capacity were I guess weren't given any power to to change or to question I think you know and I know certainly growing up as a kind of first generation English person my parents are from the Caribbean and, you know, it was almost, I was conditioned to be grateful for the opportunities that I had and to, um, to kind of, to shrink myself and to, you know, to not ruffle any feathers, just kind of, you know, move in and amongst what's going on, but, you know, do so quietly by all means excel and, you know, do what you can to, you know, to, to kind of be successful but don't don't take up too much space doing it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's unfortunate, right? You have mm. to think yourself not be your full self uh, to fit. Yeah. With what society is it thing it wants. So it's great to have to have what you're doing right now. And it seems as though because of that awareness that increased, you know, in the last three years, that things may be pushing a little bit better but I have seen it go back so I would love to just hear your input on just the event industry and let's kind of take it to this industry do you feel like we are doing well now when it comes to diverse and inclusive talent and what do you think is missing right now 2020 yeah yeah I feel like um the conversation has petered out (laughs) I feel like there was uh there was a lot of there was a lot of lip service Mm. in the beginning but not very much action. Yeah, I definitely think that there there has been some stagnation mm-hmm. in moving forward in being inclusive. You know, that I think the sustainability agenda has pushed diversity off the top spot. Mm-hmm. And that's what event professionals are focusing on. Cause I think with sustainability, there is it's a safer topic. It's less, there's less controversy. There's less room to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing or offend. Whereas, you know, with diversity and inclusion, you know, it, there, it, there is a lot to tackle. There is a lot to take on and there is a lot to consider. And I think, you know, there's so much, 
that there's so much that could go wrong. There are so many ways that, you know, you can offend. Recently, I ran a session on inclusion for an events industry, events industry event. And uh, we, we, we created a really kind of open and safe space where the participants just talked really openly about what their challenges are, why they've stagnated, you know, why they feel that it's kind of such a contentious issue. And the common themes really were still lack of knowledge and awareness, not wanting to cause offence by doing or saying the wrong thing um, and appearing performative and tokenistic. Those, you know, there were there were all sorts of kind of more nuanced things, but everything kind of came back to that. You know, it just, that lack of, you know, the whole not wanting to offend. Do you feel like it could be an excuse sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. I think it. I think it is an excuse. I think definitely when you know when when we really started to push the diversity and inclusion agenda within events, there were efforts being made that was very quickly being called out and shut down. I did see that a lot. Some some efforts were not efforts. Some were very performative. But, I, you know, I definitely saw instances where people were trying, but the focus was on what they were getting wrong rather than what they were getting right. So again, you know, look, that's not an excuse because we're resilient beings. We work in the events industry. We get stuff wrong. Like it, it goes wrong. That's just part and parcel of events. So it's up to you to use that opportunity as an opportunity for learning to, to get it right. Yeah. So because of that, it sounds like, and, I, and what I'm seeing, it sounds like pretty much this whole subject of diversity really just hovers at the surface. And that there's an effort that because because we're not willing to go a little bit deeper than what we're getting wrong and um maybe what's missing, how can we bring a little bit more depth to that conversation when it comes to diversity in our meetings and events? Definitely. I mean, just going back to that particular discussion within the events industry, we did have some real breakthroughs. And, you know, the biggest was that, you know, look, you can't tackle the whole thing in one event. Like you can't be totally 100% accessible, totally 100%, you know, a representation across every single race, culture, faith, you know, gender. Like it's, it's, it's just not possible. So like with everything, <laughs> break it down, chunk it down, you know, focus on some key objectives. And we looked at what these these could be, and actually, we felt some of the most the the most positive ones are representation, accessibility, and starting with what you know and what you feel most connected to. So, you know, we we talk about unconscious bias and things like that. We're human beings, and we will naturally gravitate to causes that we're most familiar with and will most you know, and, and, and kind of most affect us. So I'm a black woman. Naturally, I, I have kind of more of an affinity with, you know, issues on race and so on and so forth as much as, as much as I look through the lens of being totally inclusive. Like that's just natural. So, you know, you could be a vegan or you could be a Muslim or, you know, you could be disabled. So maybe maybe fo- start start your event with that focus okay well how how can i how can i make my make sure that i have really great vegan options at my event how can i make sure that there's areas available for prayer or that there's you know that there are kosher food options and that there's no pork served and you know things things like that how how can i do my best to engage people from different communities how can I look to make this event more accessible is there is there a really accessible train station near the venue so that you know and 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 it's those things so if if you if you kind of start with something like that you've got something to build on you're not you're not going to get it right but you're like okay these are the things we did really well at this event this year 
how can we make it better next year? Because you've banked that. You've banked the things that you've done well. So you just build on it. And you'd be really open and say, I don't know everything yet. <laughs> you know, lean on lean on suppliers that do. And that's that point. There are there are companies that specialize in how to communicate inclusively, how to market inclusively, how to, you know, how to focus on accessibility within your events, cultural catering, everything. Like there are suppliers out there for everything. Don't try and do it all lean people that know what they're doing. Yeah. And and it's really pushing yourself, you know, starting with kind of your uniqueness, but then also pushing, really pushing out and um, learning a little bit more about different audiences and your audience specifically and how to how to cater to your audience, making sure that they have all of the options that they need and that they're represented and that they're um, seeing the accessibility all the way through your event too. Um, sometimes we really gravitate towards just what is familiar to us. And it's really important to just continue to challenge yourself and go outside of the box. And maybe you just do it for one or two things on one event. And maybe the next year when you do that same event, maybe you can expand that a little bit more. But definitely, I would say also continue to challenge yourself um, as well. Um, So let's talk about Fulfilling talent when it comes to events and um, how that can be a challenge for some event professionals in order to be able to um, book diverse um, and inclusive talent. It can be hard to find, but now that we know you, we look up. (laughs) But how can that be easier for event professionals? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I would say the main thing is make sure your talent is not an afterthought. You know, there are, as as doing what I do, there are, you know, uh, there are so many bookings I do with short lead times, you know, so my clients will be like, well, I had somebody who was diverse, who, you know, who was on the panel, but, you know, they had to drop out at the last minute or, you know, and and it's like, well, maybe because you booked them at the last minute, you know, if you, if you have the talent that you want secured in as far as in advance as possible then you know you're you're going to run into less less issues just be really really intentional about what you want your event to look like who you who you want to engage with as you said you know outside of your kind of standard delegates like you know how how do you yeah how yeah how do you make your event more attractive to other people in the industry start asking yourself those questions like right in the early planning stages you know again we have the blueprint for you know all of the other logistics of what we need to make a great event we have those things we've done it time and time again what else yeah absolutely I also think just how people network and look um for yeah too can be very important um because sometimes, again, we always are gravitating towards what we know, but maybe let's look outside of the box when we're networking when we're at specific events. Again, challenging ourselves to go outside of the box when it, when it comes to making new connections. We'd love to just hear what your thoughts about that are in terms of increasing our network with the aim for more diverse connections. Definitely. I mean... Starting Spectrum, I could have made Spectrum an agency for Black women. That would have been really easy for me. Um, I know a lot, <laughs> but I didn't want to because for me, I didn't, as as important as a cause that is, you know, I realized true inclusion means everybody. So, you know, it's it's everybody other than who is represented. And now it was never about kind of excluding anyone but it's you know there there aren't there isn't enough amplification of voices or you know as I said people who are disabled people who are in the LGBTQ community so because I had that focus and that drive to bring together people from you know different walks of life that was what I did I reached out to lots of different people on LinkedIn people that I didn't know and I know so much more about 
different communities and different cultures and different almost like micro communities within industries you know you have like you know you have like women in tech but you also have like black women in tech or latin american people in tech you know within every single industry there are there are micro communities there are there are lots of ways that you can engage with people from different backgrounds so again it just it always starts with with the intention yeah yeah absolutely I would love to hear your thoughts on diversity in the workplace. What I've been seeing, especially since, you know, George Floyd, that we seem to be a little boxed when it comes to celebrating diversity. It seems to have to happen on a particular month or a particular time with ways that people are, you know, celebrating. How can organizations do this a little bit differently other than changing their logo, right? Every Every month. Well, well, I'm quite known for being anti-awareness days. I am it, the world. <laughs> it is it is something that I I feel on the whole has become very performative. Yes, I I kind of I get the idea in principle and perhaps where it started, but we should be beyond that now. You know, create your own agenda for your business don't just kind of celebrate this thing at this time because everyone else tells you to make it make it a culture make it again make it something that you look at over a longer period of time you know rather than trying to like cram in all of these days into into one week or sorry into you know into a into a year you know look at your two three year agenda you know, look at the kind of intersections within those things that you want to look at. You know, we've got disability and we've got pride. And so we've got disability pride and we've got black disability pride. Like speak to, speak to the people within your business. Find, really find out who they are and what's important to them and what they want to see in terms of representation and also what they want to share about themselves. You know, I've, when I, whenever I've kind of worked in organizations, I've not wanted to share certain facets of who I am. I've wanted to keep that very separate because th- there hasn't, I haven't felt that there's the want for a genuine connection or belonging. To create a safe space first, you know, everything, everything kind of falls on, onto psychological safety for, you know, your employees and for your, for your business. Why do you want to create a culture of belonging and inclusion? You know, like, is it because, you know, you're genuine about it because, you know, the human side, that should be the driver. If it's about a business case, then forget it, really. Yeah. I feel if you're genuine about making sure that you're always celebrating and being inclusive, then it would happen the time and absolutely it, it's a big day of the week that you celebrate certain people it would be always right it would be a nice kind of mix throughout throughout the day and like you said integrated within the culture so yeah. um, that so let's talk a little bit about some tips some tips for event professionals when it comes to just securing um, top diverse talent, making it easier for them. What can you share? Or even if you do have resources at Spectrum Speakers that can be of help, I would love for you to just share um, with us how to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, just kind of speaking from the perspective of the, you know, as an owner of, of, of an inclusive speaker agency, A, work with, work with suppliers who specialize in this. That's literally the you know, the, the most easiest and, you know, time effective way that you can do that. Event planners are busy. You know, it takes a lot of time to do a lot of research into, into different, yeah, di- different options. However, if that is your role, I know that, you know, that some companies have speaker sources within their kind of business. Again, you know, LinkedIn is your friend. You can do so many searches. You can look for, yeah, black in, black in tech or, yeah, 
all, all, all of those things. I think just get really clear on what you want, what you're looking for, and and get really get really really resourceful. Speak to speak to different people within your network. Ask different people within your network to share within their networks. Speak to the speakers that you already know that you've already worked with. Um, see if they can see if they can recommend talent. You know, keep just keep keep your ears to the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And if let's say we have a speaker in our midst that wants to be a part of your talent base, how would they do that? Yeah, so we we have an application process on our website. Hopefully, it's very thorough in so much as you know we kind of list out what your what your key topics are, what what are the things that you're passionate about, what's your what's your drive, what's your story, what's your why, and most importantly, not only you know what do you what do you want to share, but what do you want your audience to take away how do you want them to feel because I think that's that's the best thing you can give as a speaker but yeah just just get in touch with us awesome well thank you so much is there anything else that you would just want to share about this very important topic before we wrap up yeah just just again just be intentional (laughs) focus on inclusion and sustainability in everything that you do and the rest takes the rest takes care of itself i love that thank you thank you so um if anyone wanted to reach out how would they um contact you if you wanted to drop a website which we'll all also have in the description but go ahead absolutely and- yeah so our website is spectrumspeakers.co.uk and we are also on linkedin and we are on Instagram as well at Spectrum Speakers UK. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you. Before you go, I do have a few questions. It's kind of like a rapid fire session where I just ask a few quick questions to those that come on. And yeah, hopefully they're fun for you to answer. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. So the first one is what are your quick thoughts about Chat GBT? Oh, <laughs> chat GPT is very exciting, but has a long way to go. Yeah, it does. Have you used it? You use it for your business? I have. I have used it for my business and it, and it has been a game changer in, in a lot of ways. I, I had a very, I did a very interesting search the other day when I uh, typed in, I'm looking for black, well-known black entrepreneurs in the UK. And it came back with Richard Branson. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Top answer. So, yeah, that's all I would say. In some, ways, in some ways, it's amazing, but yeah. it's, it's still a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. you, do need, you do need to still double check what the output that it gives for sure. Absolutely. Uh, what is your um, favorite book? Like if anyone wanted to read a book on, let's say, the diversity, they want to get caught up, what would be a book you would recommend to them? Yeah, absolutely. So I really love a book called Diversify. It's by it's by June Sarpong. She's well known in the UK and she used to be diversity officer, well, he- head of diversity and inclusion for the BBC. And Again, she obviously talks about the human case, but obviously the business cost to not being diverse and inclusive. That's good. That sounds like a good one. I'll put that on my list too. Is your favorite celebrity? Grace Jones. Oh, yeah. She had a yeah. Like, yeah, I, I want to be her when I grow up. <laughs> awesome. Oh, she's just timeless, right? Yeah, yeah, she's epic. Yeah, and then your favorite vacation spot that you would recommend? Oh, I love, 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 love Lisbon. Lisbon in Portugal. It's my, it's my happy place. It kind of has everything. It's got a really buzzing city. 
You've got beaches very, very close by. It's really diverse and multicultural. And everyone there is just lovely. Awesome. Thank you. I want to get to Lisbon too at some point. I almost made it, I think, right before the pandemic hit. Do it. You won't be disappointed. Thank you so much for being here. This has been a wonderful conversation. And I'm just excited to get to know you. And I'm looking forward to having you back. Great. Thank you for having me. Welcome back. I absolutely love how Laura Lee shares the tips on what we can do in order to really pay attention to our events. Like she says, we can't be 100% in everything, in accessibility and diversity and inclusion. It is virtually impossible, but we can try to make sure that we have great representation and that we ensure that our attendees' needs are being met. Most of all, make sure that your talent or your speakers aren't an afterthought and bring some sincere thought into it. Now, if you need help with that, reach out to Laura Lee. The links are in the description. And furthermore, I would love to hear what you think of this episode. Please tag Planners on Purpose, hashtag Planners on Purpose, and let us know what you think about this episode and some of your biggest takeaways. Thank you so much for joining. And until next time, please stay on purpose. Well, that wraps it up for this episode. If you enjoyed the conversation, hit the like button and tell us how much you enjoyed the show by leaving a message in the comments. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.